Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel. This is the Lawn Care Life. Today I want to show you a yard that I started working on earlier this year that looked terrible. And I'm even going to show you some flashback footage from my earlier video when I first started working on this lawn. And I want to show you what it looks like today. And I can also talk to you about the process I use to get the lawn to respond the way that it is. It actually is not that complicated. Today's video is sponsored by my friends at Graham Spray Equipment. You see my Graham Spray Rig on the back of my truck right here. I have been talking with the Graham people and they said they do have 200 gallon rigs in stock on the lot. So if you're looking to get started or add an extra rig to your business, you can go to GrahamSC.com or give those guys a call for the pricing. So here's the yard and let's just be honest with you. I mean this yard is not going to win any awards, okay? Nothing incredible. Oh, it might win most improved. I'm going to show you some of the flaws with the yard, but let's just take a look around. It's a tiny little yard and show you what it looks like so far. And this is Bermuda grass. Got a little crepe myrtle tree here. It's giving a little shadow problem, but that's okay. And we'll talk about the weeds we're seeing in the yard and what to do about those. But if you look around here, even down there, not too bad. Not, not terrible, not great, but it, it looks okay. So let's talk about uh, what's going right and what's going wrong with this lawn. Well, if I look at what's going wrong with it, and it's not in terrible wrong, you can see this grass that's been mowed and piled up on the lawn. That lets me know that the grass is probably not being cut as often as I would prefer. So if it was being cut every week or even sometimes less than a week, uh, then you wouldn't have that problem. But if it, you know you wait 10 to 14 days to most times, you're going to have grass clippings piled up. And that's not necessarily a terrible thing, but the problem is if the grass grows too tall and you cut it short, you can put some stress on the lawn and turn it brown. The color is not ideal, and that's probably due to the mowing frequency that this yard's getting. Before I continue on with this video, let's flash back to some previous footage of what this yard looked like in the spring when I started working on it. little yard which I love uh, on the street we already have another customer which I love and just weeds galore I mean just just weeds 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 I mean this is it I mean is this just weeds weeds poa uh, geranium just everything we got uh, let's see dandelions in here there's clover I saw look here clover just all kind of nastiness in this yard and i think it gets actually worse as you go over here so you look over here and it looks like it has been cut maybe sort of um, some of these weeds are yellowing out i don't know from the heat or the lawnmower running over them or whatever but uh, anyway you get the point it's, it just doesn't look good this is basically so I'm hoping that's somewhat encouraging you seeing that and what kind of progress this yard can make because I'm filming this in mid-August and I'll be honest with you, when I was here six weeks ago or so, this yard looked basically the same. It had already recovered so much in just a few months. And I like how sometimes when people have a cool season lawn, it seems like I feel sometimes a little bit envious with dealing with warm season grasses because sometimes it seems like people with cool season grasses they can just wipe out the whole yard and reseed it in the fall and then they got a great looking lawn and well we don't typically have that luxury with the warm season grasses but the advantage we have sometimes is our grasses spread very quickly at least some of them there's always just pretty slow but bermuda this yard had thin bermuda had not been well taken care of and you can see how well it recovered without any seed without any extra sod it's just the bermuda that was already there when given some proper nutrients began to spread and now we've got a decent looking yard that i think will continue to improve next year uh, under more care and also obviously the mowing frequency improved a little bit all right so let's look at what's going on with the yard right now you still got a few weeds in here so you got chamber bitter which is a common weed in our area i've got some nut sedge and this is yellow nut sedge which typically grows a little more upright and uh, has a lighter color on it than the purple nut sedge i'll be honest i don't know what that is but i, I think uh, i'm going to kill it you can see as you get closer to this shrubbery then the bermuda grass is not getting as much sunlight and what happens you got thin bermuda grass and that makes it more susceptible to weeds now my guess is because this yard had been neglected for some time if we wouldn't have done the proper applications that we did we would have had significantly more pressure from the chamber better but because of pre-emergent things like that we've been able to control a lot of it and now we're trying to control some more of it with a 
supposed to merge in. If I remember correctly, when I first got here, this crepe myrtle was taller, and I believe the customer did tell me he was going to cut it shorter, which looks like he probably did. Uh, I can't remember, to be honest with you. Doing that, to me, did not make the crepe myrtle look that great. I mean, it's blooming and all that, but it's kind of hacked off short. But what it did was allow more sunlight to get in here to help this Bermuda grass be able to fill in quicker and it does look like we did have just a little bit of crabgrass breakthrough on this one i'd have to go back and check my records to see when the first application was done usually for us in here in the birmingham alabama market if i'm able to get my pre-emergent out in january or february typically it's going to control most crabgrass now if i get into march i may have a little bit of breakthrough again you can treat that with a post-emergent as well so let's talk about how simple this really was. So you come in with an initial application. Again, if you can get in here in January or February, I'm talking about for our warm season grasses, and I'm talking about in the area I live, in the Birmingham, Alabama market, typically we try to get some prodiamine down. That's my pre-emergent that we can use before the crabgrass germinates. And that's not gonna just help with crabgrass. It's gonna help with a lot of annual weeds to control those. Now, once I get into March or April, then you might switch over and use Dimension or you might use Prodiamine as well as a post-emergent product for crabgrass, such like a Quinclorac product like Drive Accelerate or something else that has Quinclorac in it. So that, at that point, you're trying to kill the baby crabgrass that has already germinated. And then the Bermuda grass, again, with sunlight and fertilizer, you're going to get a great response. And that's what I'm really encouraged about on this yard is by putting fertilizer out. And typically, I'm fertilizing my customers' lawns a couple of times, do it maybe in March with a slow-release fertilizer and then come back again in May or June and hit it with another slow-release. Now, that's not the only way you can do it, but that's how I'm, I'm, my program set up. And you can see how much this grass is filled in from the original video clip that I showed you earlier. Between those two fertilizer applications, I'm typically coming back in with some Spectacle Flow, which is a, another pre-emergent product. And I've been using Metzl Furon and Change Up as two post-emergents to help control a lot of the weeds. Now I'm in the summertime and I've got these weeds here. I've got Nuts Edge, I've got Chamber Bitter. So today I'm spraying weeds with Celsius and Certainty a combination that is very effective on warm season grasses and will control many, many weeds in Bermuda, Zoysia, Centipede, and St. Augustine lawns. Now, as we transition into the fall, I wanna make sure I get my fall pre-emergent application down before the weeds start germinating. Before it comes October and I walk outside and you feel that cool air that's such a relief for us in the hot, humid states. Before that happens, I wanna have applied a, a fall pre-emergent. So I'm typically using Spectacle Flow uh, which it gives you great control on poa annua and other cool season weeds and then mixing in something like semazine 24d or semazine and metzofuron there's a lot of different combinations you can do you can do split applications with your pre-emergent you can spray your pre-emergent come back later with semazine i mean there's a lot of different ways that people do it um, but that's kind of the object here is we're trying to control those cool season weeds, get your pre-emergent out before they germinate so it'll control the weed before anyone actually ever sees it in the lawn. And this yard is not perfect, okay? There are some weeds, but, just, but think about it this way. The less weeds there are this year, annual weeds is the less that are gonna be dropping seeds that might potentially grow back next year, okay? So if I, if I have, you know, 10,000 weeds in the yard this year, and I got it down to, to 10 weeds in the yard, then there's only 10 weeds dropping seeds in the yard versus 10,000, okay? Which is gonna probably make it look better next year. And of course, another year of pre-emergent application, things like that. So you can see how, yes, it is a process. Yes, it can take some time, but also I want you to be encouraged that you can actually see dramatic results fast. Now, if somebody calls me up in August and, and just got a yard full of every weed in the book, I'm probably going to sort of encourage them like, hey, you know what, let's just wait and start with that fall pre-emergent application. The winter time is going to kill most of these weeds. And if you'll just, let's get that pre-emergent out and look forward to having a great year next year. Now, if they're desperate and want to spend money and want me to come kill some stuff, I can kill weeds in the late summer, but I typically leave that decision up to the customer and tell them kind of what I would do if it was my yard. Appreciate you guys watching the video. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to get into weed control and fertilization like I do, you can go to lawncarelife.com. There's the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. There's pricing charts. There's lawn care letters package. There's all kind of documents, programs, things for those that are looking to do that. And also for mowing and mosquito spraying. If you need a spray rig, just Google Graham Spray Equipment. Give those guys a call or go to grahamse.com. We'll see you guys in the next video.